What is the work of creation? Well, according to the Westminster Catechism, the work of creation is God's making all things of nothing by the word of his power in the space of six days and all very good. So the doctrine of creation, which is the Bible's explanation for human origin and meaning, towers over human life and begins all our thinking about God. This central truth that God created all things may be denied by atheists, but it cannot be called impractical. Creation has far-reaching implications. So when Job puzzled over his suffering, God showed his unquestionable wisdom by pointing to the complexity of creation. As we read in Job chapter 38, verse 4, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Now, when Moses asked God to excuse him from being an ambassador to Pharaoh, the Lord reminded him that he created Moses and he could strengthen him. As we read in Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have I? Have not I, the Lord? Now, when Isaiah called God's people to repent and cast away their idols, he emphasize that God shaped them and formed them. He is the potter and they are the clay, as we read in Isaiah chapter 29 and 45. Now, just as an artist has rights over the artwork he makes and explains its meaning, so our creator has a right to tell his creatures or his creation how to live. Now, the Westminster Catechism begins its explanation of this foundational doctrine by stating that God made all things out of nothing. So this statement shows a great difference between the creator and his creation. He existed before creation. He is self-existent and he is alone. So, the Genesis chapters 1 and 2, the creation account in those chapters present God as a soloist. Unlike uh, pagan creation explanations in the ancient world that involved a struggle between forces or gods, the eternal God alone is uncreated, dependent on no one else, as the Apostle Paul declared in Athens. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 24 to 26, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives life to all, breath and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. Now, this creation, according to Genesis, took place in the space of six days. At the end of each of the six days, we hear that there was evening and morning, marking the end of each workday. So this provides the pattern for our work week. week. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day, as we read in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 11. So we can't really think about the six days of creation without considering the seventh day, the day of rest. In his pattern of creation, God was holding out the goal for humanity entering into God's heavenly rest and there's so much more we could say about that but we could read hebrews chapter 4 verses 9 and 11 so finally this creation was all very good 
Now it's true to say that there are many evils today in this world that which make us think it's not good. And it's not good when people are abused and suffer or when um, parents outlive their children, for example. The doctrine of creation confirms that evil is unnatural and the world God created was very good. The book of Genesis portrays this goodness with seven affirmations of it was good, culminating in and indeed it was very good, as we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. So it was only with the entrance of sin that creation was corrupted, as we read in Romans chapter 5 and Romans chapter 8. So the good news is that the Creator deemed it good to subject his own perfect son, the serpent crusher, Jesus Christ, to the misery and curse of this fallen world. He suffered the penalties of our sins and ushered in new creation. There is still time now to repent of sins and believe in Jesus, thereby entering God's eternal rest. Through him, the Spirit of God, who hovered over the waters, now dwells in believers. And one day God will do away with all the evil that we experienced, the suffering, the death, the sin. Uh, as we wait for that day when the new heavens and the new earth will be so good, we can hardly imagine it. Let's give our amen to God. Let us behold or look at God's work of creation and new creation, that is, the offer of salvation in Jesus Christ, and proclaim he is good.